Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Startup Brand Zagreb. Uh, our guest speaker today is uh, Ivana. She's the founder of Women in Albia. Welcome, Ivana. Thank you for your invitation. Well, thank you for being here. So, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Well, I run Women in Albia, which is now uh, after six years. It's uh, basically a media brand for women in business, for corporate women and for women entrepreneurs in one sentence. <laughs> That's uh, pretty cool. So, uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how, how that, uh, actually even better, how did you start the business or why did you start the business? Uh, well, I'm, I, I, I would like to I like to say that I'm the showcase of women entrepreneurship because uh, uh, now women start business uh, between 35 and 45 uh, when we want uh, change in our lifestyle. But with me, it was a combination also, I was looking for new challenges because I was um, working in um, consulting. Always in my corp or in corporate career, I was looking for job with more challenges, uh, which is dynamic, uh, dynamic and etc. But uh, the problem was uh, uh, almost at the end of my career that I had one child. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have a dynamic job, which is challenging, you have to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. My last job was consulting, and that was that what I wanted to do, but uh, I couldn't travel. So uh, then it uh, then the financial crisis occurred, and basically we all uh, were laid, laid laid off. And I, I found one I found a job afterwards, but in the meantime I realized that uh, women are um, uh, much weaker in networking. Mm -hmm. When I was looking for a job, I realized that I don't have the network. And uh, when you look, when you're looking for a job, you should have already a network. So um, I had time because at the, at the time I was pregnant with my second child, and I started to uh, organize uh, networking events for women, and also started the LinkedIn group, uh, Women in Adria. Uh, I wanted that uh, women in the, this region, I wanted to connect women and uh, I, that group was really, um, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, discussions online and uh, meetups uh, live, uh, in, in, in live. And after I found, uh, after I found a job, uh, I was thinking what to do with this. Uh, one was, one uh, direction was to do um, a non-profit. And, uh, and then I realized when I was on my job that um, it really wasn't uh, challenging and, and I realized that I couldn't find that job that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And when I was in this uh, women's uh, networking uh, uh, for almost a year or more, I realized that uh, in the world this can be business, that there are, there are, there are, business, there are business networks that function as business. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to uh, start my own business that would be focused only on uh, networking events. And our first event was this networking breakfast, which is uh, which we uh, run today also, and women uh, like it uh, very much. But uh, very soon uh, I found out that uh, business cannot be sustained only on um, if we only have networking events especially in this part of the world, because networking is very uh, new. Yeah. Or, or, or at least it was five, six years ago. So uh, I realized that we have to do a lot more. And now we are a media business with uh, membership, with a uh, lot of projects. And basically, we do everything for this population. And also, on the other side, uh, we work with companies. Uh, showing them, uh, working with them, the, uh, on, on the premise that women, women entrepreneurs are a business segment that they should adjust to and adjust their proposal to them. Products, maybe. And yes. And yes. Everything. Well, it's a, a very familiar pattern of the story. So you had a personal problem and you had to solve it and then saw a market yes. need. Yes, also the, the problem was that um, when, even when I finished uh, university, I couldn't uh, find um, anything uh, uh, women's, uh, women's uh, media uh, wasn't what I was looking for. 
So, and I realized that there are a lot of other women like me. So the, there wasn't any uh, online magazine for women in business? Yes, for uh, let's say ambitious women. Oh. So just uh, beauty magazines and all those yes. kinds of things. Yes. So networking yeah, in Croatia is quite, quite hard. People still haven't gotten uh, the value of it yet. Yes, I think we still don't understand the, the, how that you have to give a lot to receive something, and it's not one-to-one -one relationship. So uh, this is your basically first uh, and enterprise for mm -hmm. first company. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is some of the other things you did before? So you worked for corporates before. Mm -hmm. Listen, uh, I, I was uh, economics, I finished economics mm -hmm. and started uh, to work in my, my whole corporate career was in big four, first in, uh, in audit with, with PwC and after that in Deloitte in advisory and uh, I'm really happy for this experience uh, because these, uh, these kind of companies teach you to work very efficiently and to look at the big uh, at the big picture, which I think is very um, very good start point for entrepreneurship because there is no uh, no given path you should follow in entrepreneurship. You should, you so have to adjust. So true. Uh, so uh, you've been uh, doing this for how many years now, with Adria? It's now six years. Six years. So, what uh, is the biggest challenge you had, biggest problem? <clears throat> Our biggest challenge was, I think, uh, that we were ahead of the market. Mm -hmm. Because I was starting, uh, and even now, a lot, of, uh, lot of people think that women entrepreneurs are social responsibility and not a business segment. It's, and on the, on the side of the companies we work for. Mm -hmm. And uh, when, when I started this in 2012, yeah, that was the, that's a big problem. Now the situation is much better because the uh, European Bank for uh, Research and Development has done a lot of uh, work with the banks and explaining them that, this, that the women entrepreneurs are business segment, uh, they should uh, uh, they should adjust to them and I'm just trying to uh, translate this to other companies like telecoms and uh, insurance and there is really a lot, lot of opportunity and I think uh, things here now in our region are much better uh, than in Central Europe. Mm -hmm. So uh, what would you say was the, the biggest uh, surprise during those six years? Something you didn't expect? Uh, the, uh, the biggest surprise for me was when the, um, when the EBRD started to work with companies and uh, with banks and then when I realized that what was I doing, what was I suggesting them we should do was really uh, the, best, the best practice and now uh, and even some of our projects like supplier diversity are some which is very, uh, very unknown and really um, uh, top in the Europe. Okay. Uh, can you tell me more about uh, some of the things uh, you're going to do in the next, within the following years? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, last year uh, we had our first franchise. It's in Macedonia. Okay, yeah. So basically, this um, in this six years we uh, developed a business model that can be applied anywhere. And uh, now I think after five years I should do, I, I plan to focus more on um, developing in other countries. On franchising and expanding yes. the business brand. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna open uh, the floor for questions from the audience now. Mm -hmm. Audience, any questions? Typical Croatian audience. <laughs> They're here. It's <laughs> <laughs> not, not just the two ones right here. They're just so shy. Any questions? I can translate the question, it's fine. Share some difficulties. How do you get, how, how do you combine uh, the government that come to your events and the private sector? How do you combine? Share some experience. How do you do it? What's, what's your magic wand? Well, um, I think uh, it's much easier now for, uh, for 
I, I, uh, I after these all these difficulties uh, to uh, to uh, to make private sector understand. But when they understand it, when they see the business case, they get it, and it's much easier. But I think basically for government, for our, our government should should uh, understand even even better because uh, if you invest in women, uh, it's good for the whole society. But they still they still don't get it. <laughs> now, can you explain? Here is a platform to explain it to them. Why yes. is it better? Uh, because women entrepreneurs are unused uh, potential, unused economic potential. And even, but it, they have to be treated um, uh, in, in respect to their specifics. For example, we as far started one petition this year uh, to um, where, where we suggest that government puts gives subsidies or tax allowances to women entrepreneurs. Because um, we, a lot of women entrepreneurs work uh, at home with kids around them. They cook lunch. They uh, drive kids around, and because uh, that is basically entrepreneurship is the uh, only way for them to uh, balance it all. But if we uh, but if we look look at um, seriously, uh, if you if you cook lunch, if you if you drive kids around, your business can't 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 uh, go skyrocket. So uh, the yes. yes. So uh, women are starting businesses uh, on high rates uh, and have more attitudes to uh, entrepreneurship than men. But financially, their businesses are much weaker. So if uh, if government gives uh, us tax allowances for kid care, for uh, home care, mm -hmm. then we would we could focus more on on, on business. Because women entrepreneurs essentially don't have uh, don't have um, territory. We work until the last day and start after we give uh, birth, and it's really that is really I think the toughest, the, the most uh, difficult part of being a women women entrepreneur. Because if you don't work, if, if there are few of, a few of us in the company, mm -hmm. if you don't work, the company goes goes under. Yeah. Yes. And they really, really, we really see that uh, their income decreases when they have kids. Yeah, that uh, definitely led me to my next question. So, how do you see the entrepreneurial climate in uh, Croatia? Mm -hmm. uh, and is it improving? Uh, I think it's improving. There is a, a lot of more. Uh, I, I think it's much, much better than compared to when we started. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's much better for women entrepreneurs. I, I must admit that we did something to uh, that we really contributed to that because um, uh, we are not an entrepreneurial country in terms that our parents were entrepreneurs. So we don't have any role models at home. At home, so we have to find them somewhere else. And if a woman reads in our magazine uh, how five other women started their businesses, uh, we really really see a pattern. When they, for example, read our new, uh, magazine for like six months, and then mm -hmm. then there is the something in their head, they start thinking, and they do something, mm -hmm. either change change a job or start a business. So you have to see uh, see or see. Uh, you can't be what you can't see. No, that makes sense. Yeah. My personal experience: start a business, then quit your job. They have a price on that one. Yes, but you have to. Yes, um, our last book was uh, from uh, uh, from from employee to uh, entrepreneur because we get a lot of questions for women. How, uh, uh, for example, how how do how actually do you um, how to quit job and start? Um, uh, what business to start? So this uh, transition period is uh, very difficult, and it's easier to start a business and work when you don't have a ch a children or family. Mm -hmm. so I, I was working six months uh, double and that was a disaster. At home, I think I have to I had to quit because uh, uh, you don't uh, you don't you you don't clean, you don't cook, <laughs> everything everything falls apart. So a lot of women use maternity leave as exit strategy. Because if you work uh, whole day and you come home and you have kids, when are you going to work on your business? 
No, oh, you can find 15 minutes per day. Yes, <laughs> yes. Which is nothing, yeah. Enough for news, I don't know nothing that. Because you are just too tired to think about anything. And when you are on maternity leave, then you are in some another space. You have more time. So, but uh, what about access to knowledge and experience? Mm -hmm. So, if it's, uh, for example, I can only speak for startups, you know, to have a better chance of uh, having a successful startup, it might be good for you to work in a startup. Now, okay, when you already have a child, it might be a little bit, well, definitely. <laughs> More, more difficult, but uh, is there anything that uh, helps with uh, neural education? Uh, yes, I, I agree with you that uh, there are a lot of gaps. Uh, when you start a business, you are expert in your field, but you are building a company, and uh, especially when you start employing people. Mm -hmm. And that's a very high risk for entrepreneurs. And now that's the reason why we have a, a series of events on, on this subject uh, in Croatia, because you don't have HR director, you don't have your in-house lawyer, and basically mm -hmm. uh, you are at risk, at high risk of employing wrong people. And then that's that's the whole that's that's the big risk for your company. If it's a small company, it cannot. Uh afford uh, HR. Uh, yes, but there are now uh, the, uh, uh, services mm -hmm. uh, like CFO outsourcing, HR outsourcing. Yes, but we, uh, I think you in your business you have to come to the point that you that you realize, okay, I can't do this by myself. I have to uh, engage this person. That was the, my lesson I learned with HR, for example, because I mm -hmm. on my uh, latest. Um, uh, employment when we were employing a, a new person, uh, the HR uh, person was uh, present uh, at interviews, and now I don't want to do anything without her because there was the, I had so much problems, so much risk attached to HR that it's really not worth it. You have to, I think, you have to uh, go through something bad to really teach, uh, to, to really learn that you need to experts. I think that's a startup lesson for everybody. Everybody learns very soon. Well, that's uh, quite quite true. Yes. Um, yeah. That, that reminded me of my own uh, problems, uh, lack of HR. Then again, it is a little bit different uh, when you're startup and you can actually pay the people. You just uh, try to form a team, including developers. Then you, uh, well. He wants to, or she wants to work with me. No one else does. You can hire. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But uh, it makes sense. Uh, HR is uh, quite an interesting field. I actually subscribe to HR.com. Do you know it for many years now? Mm -hmm. I feel it. It could be really uh, responsible for basically uh, all, almost uh, growing the company culture. Because they're the people who look uh, who is uh, hired, mm -hmm. uh, what everyone does together, what are some of the things you shouldn't do, you should do. But I'm gonna come back to you. Yes, yeah, well, I think that's the if you are building a business, uh, it, and it's when it's uh, really when it's the same people, it's the same like you, you should have the procedures the same as there are 30 of you. Because as soon as you start in, start building your procedures in the company, it will be it will be easier. Otherwise, it's complete uh, mess up, and the business cannot uh, grow. Yes, I completely agree. So, uh, what kind of initiatives other than uh, grants and uh, what do you call it, uh, subsidies? Then, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, female entrepreneurs, uh, would you also recommend? What would be nice to have to increase the number of uh, female entrepreneurs? Uh, I think this uh, government support is really uh, crucial because uh, that's the um, uh, that that would be the key for growth of women women's business. And of course, a uh, few, few years ago we had uh, special funds just for education for women entrepreneurs and for other. For, for investment, 
and uh, that's that's good because it, it turns if you if you put money aside for women entrepreneurs, that only means that more women will be able to uh, to get these funds, and that's that's very simple. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you know there's actually uh, VC funds uh, that are dedicated to funding only ventures? I know. Uh, well, I'm going to still continue the sentence, but good, now, uh, with uh, either women uh, founders or uh, majority uh, female founder, female co-founders. Mm -hmm. like I think Golden Seeds, a mm -hmm. bunch of others. Uh, as I always uh, look at what's going on in the startup world, I see more and more initiatives. Uh, for women startups. Yes, yes, yes. Which is great. And for uh, women tech, mm -hmm. also great. Is there maybe any other uh, question from the audience inspired by our great talk here? <laughs> the silence is overwhelming. What's okay. the plan? How, you, how do you see the future? <clears throat> I see us expanding to other countries. In which, in which way? Networking, media, platform? Which Everything. Way? To the franchises. Yes. So, what would you say? Maybe do you have any uh, goals in numbers? Like no. <laughs> tons of new companies or something like that. For women entrepreneurs. Yeah, sure. Why not? Well, I mean, so I know I started uh, uh, Selma I think, mm -hmm. uh, from Vienna. I don't know the matter. Yes. So yes. one million startups. And I know for there isn't a million startups, so that's an interesting number. Huh? Yes, that's that's a nice goal. Well, I think uh, I don't have such a such a number, but I think for women entrepreneurs, future is definitely uh, good, and there will be more and more uh, women-led uh, companies, and I think this number will grow will grow uh, much faster than um, women on. Um, women in corporate world because now entrepreneurship is basically they discovered entrepreneurship as some kind of new career when i was starting when i was uh, uh, when i finished my university i didn't know there was this option <laughs> there were no entrepreneurs and now my my uh, three daughters are really uh, since they are, are everything around me they are aware of this Opportunity that they they know the word entrepreneur. I didn't know the word <laughs> when I was five. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. And I tried to bring them uh, on our events. And I think it's really uh, I think I think it really puts some seeds in them because when you are somewhere, you are just um, and it's it's. I think everything is about community. And. Uh, uh, you can you can say that justify that the, the air, on all our events there is some special energy. So and everybody uh, everybody lives with some with more energy that they came uh, came with. Yeah, that sounds uh, pretty pretty great. Uh, so that is one of the topics I'm very interested in. So creating a community. Mm -hmm. What was your experience from the first time? What was the most difficult part? Expanding it or getting the first people there? Uh, the I think uh, it takes a lot of time and a lot of work because, and uh, for example, from the start, we are sending weekly newsletter and mm. every week, every week. And uh, now I don't do everything by myself with this newsletter, but for a lot of time, a lot of uh, years I did, and I think it paid, uh, paid off. So I spent my week weekends preparing this letter, and they started to expect it. So it's about um, uh, uh, about really being present for a, a long time. Now, so continuity. Yes. So for example, now we have new members, and they nobody falls from the sky. They will say, "I've been following you for years. I'm reading your newsletter." I'm Exhibit yes, so so in one moment they just decide, okay, now it's time for me to join. Again. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just uh, saying because uh, a member of our audience said exactly the same things, cool things, <laughs> yes. a few minutes ago. So uh, 
building the military? How many people do you really have in your alliance? Uh, we have some, some are very small, very private. Uh, for example, the event tomorrow we will have about 20 women. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like those kinds of events because events because they are very intimate, private, and they are, if there are small number of people, they are willing more people are very willing to share. Very uh, nice. Yes. And we also have big events uh, like our awards event uh, or event when uh, we talk about financing opportunities for women entrepreneurs, when we gather all these institutions. So it, it's really all kinds of uh, community uh, size. So you mentioned uh, awards. Uh, so what is it? what is it? What kind of awards for what? For who? Awards uh, conference? Uh, yes, so? we have uh, every year we award uh, best women entrepreneurs in four categories. So what are the same categories or the categories change? Uh, it's the same. It's uh, micro micro entrepreneur of the year, yeah. startup. Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, Perspective, uh, and Inspiring. Oh, cool. And that, you've been doing it for several years also. It's for three years. And, uh, and I, I, really, I think that project really has an impact on the whole community, whole Croatia, because after the awards, those women are present on, in all media. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, and the feedback from people is really uh, great. Oh, it sounds great. So you mentioned earlier in our talk, uh, women often don't have anyone to uh, rely upon as a role mother. Role mother. Yeah. And uh, well, now they do. Yes. <laughs> For three years, that's pretty great. Okay. So what would be some or the main advice, but also more is also okay. Uh, advice for. Uh, young uh, women who want to start a startup or who want to start a business. Oh, even better, is it the same advice for when you already have a family? Um, I think when you have a family, then um, you are more responsible. And uh, I think then, then especially you should start a business. <laughs> uh, because we all have this um, uh, a limited time. And even if you are younger, then really, then it's really sh it it would be now really it, it would be shame if you don't tr at least try to start a business because even if you fail, you know that you will learn a lot. So true. Yes. So I think uh, what women, uh, what was my experience, and what a lot of women say that they are sorry that they didn't start earlier because the more you think, the more time you waste. Especially if you are not happy uh, on your job. So, what do you think uh, is the common cause? Why didn't they start earlier? Is it fear or something else? Uh, why didn't? Well, now I think uh, the time has come that a thirty-five day start to think um, more about the quality of their life when they have kids and. Uh, that was the, also the case for, for with me. You you work, you want to build some career, and you reach something, and then you see that it's not that. That it, 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 you see that it's nothing special, especially if uh, if you uh, if you don't uh, see the a lot of women leave corporate world because they don't feel that their values uh, are um, that it, that it, it's in line with their values. They don't. They try to change something. Mm -hmm. They they try to be entrepreneurs, yeah. but uh, uh, not not many uh, corporations are. Uh, able to accept internal um, internal yeah. entrepreneurs so uh, they are very dissatisfied and that now that 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 in combination with uh, uh, private life change uh, then they decide to leave so basically they want to make a better impact yes while making a better change in their own life yes exactly that's uh, pretty cool so uh, is there any advice you would uh, give to well, female founders who don't fam have a family yet? Now it uh, might be equally as important because they'll probably be faced with a choice. Okay, do I start a family or? I think uh, it's. I think now uh, I'm 41, 
And when I was 20, I was thinking that 40 is like old lady. <laughs> now, uh, I think that's better to have kids earlier. Uh, and now at 40, you will be more experienced. You will have more life experience, business experience, and your kids will be, um, uh, won't be babies and you could focus more on business. So uh, if they, uh, especially if you are, if they are young entrepreneurs, I think without any problem, they can manage the kids and, uh, and the business. Yes. I'll pass this along to my sister, also two uh -huh. girls. Uh, well, okay, this uh, covers uh, uh, most of my uh, fireside uh, mm -hmm. church questions and material. Uh, maybe do you maybe have a, oh, actually you said the advice, a message for uh, you know, female founders in Croatia? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the message is to sum up, uh, just start. Uh, don't give up, and uh, there, there always. I think there always comes the sun. Even if you think there, there is no hope. Everything is, is falling apart. Uh, the things always, uh, uh, always. There is always sun behind the, the, the corner. Yeah, the sun rises each day. Yes, that's true. That's the life of the entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm not a female founder, but I'm also gonna give advice. So. If you've seen this video, it would make a lot of sense to at least come to the networking uh, breakfast and meet some of these great women. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here today. Thank you for your attention. And thank you for, for coming here today. Yeah. <laughs>